Well, what a buildup. So yeah, back at that SLC, I don't know if we even got to eat shrimp, but we were uh, talking and uh, yeah, I was ready to quit and I said, uh, what's next, what could I do? And John said, stick around and there'll be a role for you. You know, help enough people, there'll be an opportunity for you. And uh, that stuck close to the heart and I remember that moment and uh, I didn't have 67 comments or likes at that moment. I think it was more like uh, negative likes. And uh, I just encourage you, wherever you're at, uh, you know, you could be the next dot, dot, dot. So I want to talk to you guys about some fun ways to sell. You guys cool with that? Yeah. I know I've kind of branded myself as the marketing guy. Danny delivered the goods and all the good marketing stuff you have questions on, you can find at Vendor Row. But I want to bring some fun energy and hopefully inspire you to sell with excitement, fun, humor, and uh, take your closing back. And if you maybe find yourself being like a robot once in a while or going through the motions or you do the same close, maybe there will be a close or two that you learned today that you can laugh about but try. So you guys cool with that? All right, so the green button, is that what you advance it with? All right, so there's three rules, okay? Can you guys handle these three rules? You have to agree to have fun. You have to be yourself. I know a lot of this is coming from my point of view, and if you field train with me before, you can sometimes go, like, how does he do it? But ask yourself this, what's the, what's the best version of myself? And... Could I just take that next step? Could I not be afraid to take a whisk, right? And try something new. So we're going to go down uh, just closing Yellow Vic Road, if you want to call it that. So I'm going to walk through different closes. And uh, I encourage you to find a close or two that maybe you'll be willing to try this year. You guys cool with that? All right, so the Hail Mary close. Has anybody heard of this one or tried it out? So this was kind of uh, born into inception here at the State Fair with my right-hand man, Robin here, Fonz. And uh, it's just so much fun. You know, people always ask me, how do I stay so motivated? It's because I just have fun at the booth. In every event, I just try to have more fun and have more fun with the customer. So all these closes are geared to make a sale and to have fun, right? So if you hear something and you go, well, that's not me, well, how could you say it or use a similar way of saying it that will add to you, right? So it's not about being me, it's about how could you leave that, so what, who was I talking to last night? Robert Simmons. He's like, well, I find myself always going, well, what color would you want? What block stain would you want? Would you want it this way? And have you found yourself kind of going through those motions, right? So the Hail Mary close, right? I love this one, right? This is when they're about to leave and, you know, you can drop any crazy deal on them. And you have to act it out. So part of these closes, you have to have a little acting degree. So whether you're a novice or a master, but you act it out. So you go, all right, Mrs. Jones, I got this one last crazy deal. It's the Hail Mary deal. It's the Hail and I call them closes here for you. You probably don't want to like say, hey, it's, this is called a Hail Mary close because I'm trying to close you. But you get the point, right? So it's like, all right, so here's the deal. We're on the same team, and I'm the quarterback, right? So Tom Brady's my boy, but for this one, we got Aaron Rodgers, who's kind of like the king of Hail Marys. So I'm the quarterback, right? You're the receiver, and the goal is to score a touchdown, right? Do you know what the Hail Mary in football is, Mr. Jones, Mrs. Jones? It's that last play of the game, right? you got like 40 to 60 yards, he's got to chug it long, and the goal is to score, right? To have a touchdown. So here's the deal. I'm the quarterback, you're the receiver, we're on the same team. That's a key line. We're on the same team, and my goal is to help you get this deal. It's a crazy deal, and it might not happen, but I'm going to do everything I can to put that ball in your hands. All right? So at the end of this throw, you either go, touchdown? You catch it, or you do incomplete, right? Because this is how to get that final yes or no, right? At the booth, versus, so what do you want to do? You want steak knives, table knives? You want classic or pearl or wood block? So it's like, have fun at the booth, right? So we acted out. I mean, we've even thought about 
bringing a football and a helmet. So I know some of you guys are doing a gong or something now. So, hey, bring a prop if you need to. But we'll, and Fonz will be like on the sidelines. I'm like, hey, we got this one, boy. Let's go. All right, Blue 42. And people are watching. Blue 42, set. <laughs> and I'm like, you better catch this one. And, and then I give them the deal. And obviously, you want to make the deal even more exciting and juicy and do something crazy, right? And then I just kind of wait. I'm like, all right. And I know Jason says this in some of his talks, you know, the first person to talk buys it, right? Just kind of wait. And just... <laughs> and how many times does this go down, Fonz? I mean, you would be surprised. But here's the thing. <coughs> it's not the, cat, you know, I was raised a Catholic. It's not the Catholic Hail Mary, right? Where you're on your knees. I mean, sometimes you're praying while that ball's in the air, right? <laughs> but... The goal is to make it fun, right? So could you guys handle that? Anybody willing to try that one out? All right. And hey, here, here's why I like that close, is because if it's incomplete, guess what? It's the end of the game, right? You move on. How many times have you found yourself at the booth going, man, you should have sold that ultimate, and you're like carrying that on like four hours into the day. I'm like, dude, you should have hail married him. Stop worrying about it, right? So cool, you guys with me? Thanks, bud. Could you guys catch on to this message? Are we we're gonna have some fun with this one? Yeah. All right. So the next one is a little pour some sugar on me clothes, right? So this is when they go, well, yeah, I need to think about it, or we'll we'll think about it. We'll get back to you. We'll do that later. Number one tip on the pour some sugar on me clothes is you don't want to change your voice inflection. I've noticed, and we've worked with new people, right? And we watch them do this amazing demo. And it's like money, 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 AFTO. And at the end, the customer gives them an ejection. And then their face just, their voice changes. Or they become more salesy. So the key of this one is you don't want to change your voice inflection. You don't want to, you know, become somebody you're not. And then, um, you know, say something like, Hey, that's totally fine. You know, it's okay to think about it. It's okay to want to get it later. You know, Fon says this always. It's not chump change. You know, it's an investment. You know, we're not just throwing around money here. And if you use like a B-back pad, um, you know, we've designed one. You could design one. But you just draw a little scale on there, one to ten. Brandon talked about the power of the scale. But you got to ask them, hey, just on a... Just quick, you know, before you go, yeah, it's, it's totally fine to think about it. You know, your voice doesn't change. One to ten, ten being for sure you're going to come back. One being don't get my hopes up, it's never going to happen. Where would you rank yourself? And um, whatever they say, usually if it's a five or more, you got a good chance. If it's five or less, you know, don't get your hopes up. But the pour some sugar on me close is basically you remind them of the deal and you freaking make that deal so sweet, right? Pour some sugar on it you get it to be more juicy, more sweet. So you just go, hey, do you mind if I just sweeten up that deal? Simple, right? But you have fun with it. Hey, if I sweeten up that deal and did something that's just going to make it so sweet, it's easier to say yes to, would you be tempted just to go for it now? There you go. Simple. It's just having a little fun with it. Cool. All right, so the Save by the Bell, the Save by the Bell close. I love this one because you can use it not every close, but if you find yourself like maybe like an hour left of your shift or the day, and you know you're not going to really have another good demo, you drop this one. Hey, Mrs. Jones, you know, the bell's going to ring, or they're going to close the lights on us here, they're going to lock the door. You're kind of my last serious demo of the day. If I was just willing to just hook you up, like there's no more serious customers that are in the building, like would you be willing to get something, or would you be willing to take that next step with me? So some of these are real simple, but think of the logic behind some of these. Like, you know, these are little keys and reminders that you can use that just make sense, right? We always like to learn the whys, but when you make sense as you're closing, then the customer makes sense with it, and it's easier for them to say yes versus, hey, do you want steak knives, table knives, white, black, cherry, oak, five pay, one pay, and you you find yourself sounding like a script. So there you go. 
So it's basically a reason for them to act now when your shift's ending or it's the end of the day. All right, so this is the show me your wallet or sharpen the pencil close. So you ever have that guy, it's usually a guy, and sometimes maybe more of a, a, a fluent lady, they come up so confident that they got the money, they're going to buy it, and they just take you down an objection alley. But they keep saying, oh, I got the money, or I can, I'm going to do it someday. I'll, I mean, I'll do this. I mean, me and Fonz are like, hey, I'd really just call you out. And it's just like, hey, let me see your wallet. Like, if you got the money, let me see that credit card. And that's why some of these things, you got to be yourself, say with a smile. But do you have the courage sometimes to do that? Or do you find yourself going, okay, yeah, 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 we'll do it next year. But it's like, if they kind of walk you down that alley of like, they got the money, they keep talking about it, and they keep beating you down. It's like, all right, man, here's the deal. I want to help you get this stuff. Show me your credit card. Because I need to know I'm dealing with a, a buyer right now. And I'll, even, I'll have them pull out their wallet. All right, so all right, I just want to make sure. Because i got a lot of people that want to buy these knives. Another line we like to drop is, hey, you're not you know, the first to buy. You won't be the last to buy. We're not desperate for orders. We just want customers that want to deal with good reps and you know, be a part of this history. So that's what I like to do. It's kind of like a call-out close. Hey, show me your wallet. Show me your purse. Show me that you actually have money to buy. Because you keep asking for all these deals and stuff. Or you could call it the sharpen the pencil. Where it's like, all right, here's a deal. You know, you've been beating me down, beating me down, beating me down. I've been showing you all these deals. This is, I mean, this is the last box cutter knife here. I'm sharpening my pencil. It's sharp. It's the last, you know, I'm going to sharpen my pencil one last time for you. You guys making sense of this? Cool. All right. The, the peer approval close. You guys maybe remember this back in training, right? So... The reason why I do a lot of pictures with my customers is because I'll even pull up my phone and be like, yeah, like, I know how you feel. Like, you didn't come to buy flatware today. You know, most people don't. I mean, it's not like you woke up to come to an, an auto show to buy knives, right, or whatever show you're at. But you like it. You would use it. Eventually, you'll get it. So here's, here's what's cool. And then I'll scroll them through like a picture. They felt the same way. And it basically creates that, hey, you're not the first, you're not the last. Most people have those same feelings, right? So it's just, just a simple technique, you know? A lot of people go, why do you take pictures of your customers? One is because it creates a social following, but two, it also creates a peer approval when someone's holding up that, and I'm like, see that big old grin? Up? They're not frowning. Look at how happy they are. They're getting that flatware. So that's a good one. Feel free to use it. All right, so. The old McDonald clothes, right? This is when you have a lot of objections and they say someday we'll get it, blah, blah, blah. So, Mr. Jones, here's a deal. I'm gonna hook you up with a special, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the barn, I'm gonna give you the animals, I'm gonna give you the the land. And I got my overalls on right now. I'm going to give you my overalls. Are you willing to say yes right now if I just hooked you up with everything? I mean, who's going to say no to the old McDonald clothes? I mean, get a speaker in the background and drop the mic and start playing it, right? But the idea behind it is it taking yourself out of the ability of just going through those normal phrases and just having a little bit more fun when you're closing. So this is the one where it's like, you remind them of all the things you're offering them, and it's just like, hey, I'm giving you the land, I'm giving you the animals, I'm giving you the barn. I'm even, you know, sometimes, you know, we get the customer that's like, what else are you going to give me? And we'll even joke, we're like, what do you want, my belt? And we start taking off our shirt, my sh you want my shoe too? And they laugh, but what happens when they laugh at the clothes, right? It kind of lightens the mood, and then you come back around and, so what do you say, right? Love it. You guys having fun? Yeah. All right, so we got the price line close. So this has been key in my, my finish to the year for the last six years, where basically the last two weeks I, I make posts and emails saying, hey, anything you've ever wanted, whatever you ever wanted, 
tell me what you want to pay and I'll either accept or counter or if I can't make it happen. But then I started realizing, like, there's so many people I meet at the booth that come up and they give me all those same buying patterns and signals, but then they just, they're not willing to budge. So I'll just go, hey, I tell you what, here's the deal. I might never see you again. You're telling me you want Cutco someday. What do you want to pay for it? It's a great way to see how serious they are, but to get engagement. Because they might just offer you like 100 bucks less than maybe what you were offering. And it's like, all right, then I'm just like, boom, let's write it up, right? One tip I will say, never, if they say a price that you, you know you can roll low or make happen, write, like, write it up. Don't go, mm, and hee-haw a whole lot, because if you hee-haw or say, I can't do it, then you basically showed that you're not willing to just make that deal, right? So you offered it, like, hey, let's make a deal, and then you're like, and now I'm being stingy. So if you know in your head, like, you got bonus product, you could send a check with it, whatever. I mean, some of the flatwares I sold at the fair, I had a lot of one-third credit. I mean, I sent them some kitchen tools as a one-third. I mean, there were some deals. I'm like, hey, they might never get this flatware. I'd rather hook them up and get it now than I might never get later. So the price line closes just like you walk them through all these things and they're not really showing you a really serious buying thing and they keep giving you some, they, like they're not willing to leave. It's like, you know what, what would you pay for it? I've been known to say yes to some crazy deals. And then if they give you like a real crazy deal, I always come back and say, hey, the max kind of deal is like 30%. That's kind of like wholesale. And I say this all the time, but here's what I'm willing to do, right? And then make it happen. I mean, your goal is to sell. So what do we got? Trick or treat clothes, right? So you got, you got conference flight product. If you got to work malls, you might have some extra mall promotional product. You can order cutting boards and other stuff, you know, not, not that expensive. Get, get a box of Cutco or a bag of Cutco and have that underneath your booth. Not to sell for cash, it's to close deals, right? So, you know, you got the customer, they're just like, whatever, you know. You're like, I tell you what, how about if I pulled up my bag, of, my bag of goodies? And you pull out this box, or you like open up this box, and it's like, Psh, you know, a rainbow comes out of it. And then you just like get a bag, and you're like, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm at the mall, I had a guy, he wanted to buy something. He's like, you know, tell me that flatware deal. I'm like, here's the deal. If you know you're going to get it someday, how about if I just like sent you home with a box of goodies. And I gave him like three can openers, three peelers. I mean, the way I look at it is like, hey, I can get this sale, make him happy. And guess what he texted me? He's like, hey, what's your craziest deal on two ultimates? He really, I mean, that price line kind of went off on the deep end. So I didn't accept, but you know, the bait's out there for next year. But because I did the box of goodies and bag of goodies, he was willing to go for it. So that's like the adult trick or treat clothes, right? You send him home with some goodies. All right, so the ramen noodle clothes, right? So I kind of like do this one both ways. So like after they buy, and maybe they weren't planning on buying a whole lot, like you upserved them, I'll just kind of joke, I'll go, yeah, that's sad of steak knives. You'll probably not be able to use them for a few months because you have to eat ramen noodles because you just dropped like two grand. So I'm okay like laughing about the price because I'd rather laugh about it and have fun than be all serious about it and worry. So I'll kind of use that as like, hey, when you, know, when you get this bill paid off like in five months, then you could buy some steaks. Or I'll say it the opposite way, like where I've given them a crazy deal and discount. I go, man, Fonz, you know, do you mind if can I borrow a 20, man, for lunch? Because I won't be able to eat after this deal with these customers. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll pick up my phone, like, hey, Rach, do you mind picking up a box of ramen? Because we won't be able to eat and, you know, feed ourselves that well because they took all my commission on this one. So it's just having fun. I mean, you laughing, the customers even laugh more. All right, so that's the ramen noodles close. So I call this a triple crown close. So if you know in horse racing, triple th the triple crown is, you, you know, you win the big three, right? The Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. So anytime I'm working an event and I get any read that they have anything that could benefit from for me to make a sale, I just compound it like snowball effects. So I'm like, oh, you're a past customer? You get a discount for that. 
By the way, it doesn't need to be a huge discount. I mean, you could be like 5% and stack them, 10%. So, you know, I'll go, hey, you're a past customer, that's a discount. You're military, that's a discount. You're at the show, that's a discount. You're a senior, that's a discount. Hey, save by the bell, you know, it's the last hour, that's an extra discount. So the idea behind this is like, you don't have to just stick to one discount, you know? Make it sound so good that they have to say yes. So that's just a close I like to use if they ever come and say, oh, I'm a past rep. Hey, you get a discount for that. You're at the show too, you get a discount. Hey, we're trying to break a record, there's another discount. And how can you say no to all those discounts? It doesn't need to be a magic number, but just do a good discount and make it sound awesome and make it happen. And then another thing I like to do is like, with that I go, hey, there's no pressure to buy anything right now, but I mean, if there's ever a time to buy, like you should at least see how low of a price it'll be for everything. And I love that, like you guys ever run into the past rep and you know the five sample kit pieces? I go, hey, most of my customers are past reps who have those five and you know, they upgrade because they get the past rep discount, they get the show special. And uh, you know, we're going for a record too, so I mean, you're gonna, I mean, it's like, you pretty much get it for like free almost, just a little bit, you know, on your credit card. Um, all right, so this is the team spirit close. So this is what we do every time we beat Tulsa for the home show in St. Louis. You know, we have a lot of team spirit. Is there any Tulsa people in here? So we love to create competition, you know, with other teams and other cities and other states because you get people to buy into that. So, um, I mean, that's part of the reason why our division, you know, we could break a lot of records and, you know, I don't want to say this like to try to like, like we're pounding on our chest or anything, it's just we're really good at creating the records and the experience and the spirit at the booth. And pe every, pe every person comes up and they hear about, hey, you know, where are you from? Awesome, like, you know, you're gonna be a part of history. You're gonna help St. Louis be known across the company or Iowa or whatever show you're at. So that's a simple one, but, you know, that could be used as a drop down. Hey, you know what? I'm not supposed to do this, but this home show comes once a year. We're really, we got a steak dinner on the line. We really want to, you know, beat those Sooners. I mean, they just have people roll up in their big old trucks with all this cash in their pocket because all that oil money and all they want to do is just buy these big sets. And we're here in the middle of St. Louis, the most dangerous city in the world trying to sell knives, for goodness sake. And you're hee hawing over the price and they got all these people just throwing out wads of cash at them. That's a little extravagant. I'm just trying to riled up our competition here a little bit. All right, so you got the Vector Connect close, right? This is when I did beat Josh last year for the home show. <laughs> so I loved using this because, so here's the thing. When I was new and I was in those dark moments, this is, you know, a part of my career where Vector Connect was kind of uh, demotivation, right? I'd see all these people selling my ego came out, my jealousy came out. But then I realized like I should use that as a tool, I should use that as motivation because these people obviously are just working smarter and harder and, and I could reach out to them for tips and I started using that as a closing tactic where I'm like, hey Mrs. Jones, I mean there's these people in Denver like Curtis and Brandon in LA and they're in these territories where the cost of living is just so much higher, it's just so much easier to buy Cutco from them. You're laughing, but you know what? It's a tool to have them buy into the moment, right? So it's nothing against them. Obviously, they whoop my butt, right? But it's how could I get more customers? How could I help the experience right then and there? You don't have to use all these, but I'm just giving you tools. And the Vector Connect thing is you can use with standings. Hey, this is where our team's at. This is where I'm at. Show them the promotional. Hey, this is how far I'm away from my goal. You could be that order. You can be a part of that history. There was a talk a long time ago. Anybody ever remember Lewis Gale? Remember him from back in the day? He gave a talk, oh, it's a book called Sales Dogs, right? Sales Dogs, it's basically matching people's personalities. I don't have the in-depth science for that today. I mean, the book is probably 10 bucks on Amazon. But here's what I notice sometimes. You have somebody come up like the pit bull customer. These knives sharp, right? 
And you get scared, right? And you don't know what to do. Match their personality, right? Yeah, they're sharp as Cutco, right? So don't be afraid to match their personality. So think about that. When you're selling, you know, when someone gives you something, you know, are you mirroring them? Um, so like the golden retrievers, right? Like that kind of that wife that you know wants it. She even gives the gestures, but maybe the husband's, you know, a little tough. You know, get her involved. Hey, you know, she's the golden retriever. Hey, Mrs. Jones, like, do you think someday you'll want these knives? Like maybe for an anniversary, right? You kind of get soft-spoken. Maybe for Christmas. Like if I was able to do something real special for you, sir, you have to be, you have to be willing to, to do this for her, sir. I mean, she's so sweet. Look at how innocent and sweet she is, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, or is this over your head, right? You guys could relate? So it's just matching that personality. Or how about this one, right? The, uh, the Yorkie. How do I get my knife shopping? <laughs> how do I get that broken tip fixed? You know, yep, 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 yep. So I like to have a little fun back with those people. I'll go, yeah, we actually have Cutco glue that just came out. It's $8.99 a bottle. Let me go grab that for you. Do you have the tip? <laughs> or like the collie, right? The collies are known for tricks and jumping through stuff. That's a customer like pennies, right? Make pennies for all the kids. The leather, stack it up like mountain high. Like pull out a belt, like do something. You know, those are the people like, you know, if you notice they're like, oh, like they come up with, like I love the vendors who like, oh, Check this out, like, like a punny, like, like that's the collie, like that's tricks, right, are going to motivate them, or not tricks, but you get what I'm saying, like cool demos, do some cool stuff with them. Um, what else do we got here? Like the poodle, this is the customer, right, that was cheaper in the catalog. Pull out that freaking catalog, they're the smart ones, right, that have been price shopping and they know the prices, have that catalog right there ready. Hey, I know you're smart, but I'm smarter because I'm going to give you a better deal than this, right? But, you know, match their personality, right? They're smart, so be smarter than them. Be the alpha poodle, right? Hey, <laughs> see this right here? You think you're getting a deal, but you ain't. And then uh, the lab, you know, that's the person I think that just loves Cutco so much, right? They're, I love these knives, this is my favorite. And like, they're just, like, just shine, right? The lab, just like that dog that just licks, you know, licking you from head to toe. And that's that customer that's so happy. Just like, continue that happiness. Like, oh yeah, like, and then you're getting them back in that moment, right? So that's the sales dog's clothes for you. All right, so how are we doing on time? We doing okay? 10, 15 minutes here left, 10 minutes? So the Texas Hold'em clothes. This is where some of you, like, don't ever try, you know, I say try these, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's kind of like when you go uh, skydiving, like, you know, like, you have to sign the waiver. So some of these, like, you have to sign the waiver on, you, you know? You don't know what might happen, but you got to be willing to try it sometimes. So sometimes they'll come up and go, 2,500, no big deal for that big set. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, and then I'll just go, hey, man, you came up to my booth. You know, I pay a lot of money to be here. Like, you said you're going to get it. You said you got the money. Like, dude, like, let's roll. Like, come on, man. So it's not like you're wrong, but it's like you kind of walk. Brandon, I think, talked about this one before. It's like you walk them back through all the things they said. It's like a reminder close. But I call it like, you know, like, hey, like, you said you, you want you said you're going to do it, so it's kind of like you call their bluff, or you can go all in and just say, hey, here's the deal. I'm going all in for you here. I'm putting it all on the table, and that's when you, like, line up every accessory, pile it up, get, you know, you get the bag of goodies out, and you throw in all the clothes, you know, it's like every clothes you can that makes sense, and you just step back and say, hey, I mean, there's a song that Elvis sang for this. It's now or never. I don't know if he's saying that, but I heard that once. So I, I use that, and people sometimes sing along. All right, so, so this is the pre-qualified clothes. 
especially if you have a busy show and like you don't want to get caught up in that demo where it's taking you a while and then you see that you missed out on a few. So I'll just ask them, I, I say, here's the deal. My goal is to help you get Cutco. I want to sell you this stuff, but it's not chump change. It's not cheap. It's highly expensive to own it. I mean, if you wanted to right now, like, could you even afford and swing like 100 to 500 bucks? And I'll just directly ask them. It's a pre-qualifier. Because if they say yes, then you have another series of questions. If they say no, then I'll come back again. So I was like, so is there anything I can do to help you get Cutco today? No. Well, then, then send them off with a nice, you know, hey, you know what? Here's my card. I'll be at this show, this show, this show. Whenever you're ready, hey, next year when you're ready, come back and see me, okay? Cool. So it's a real quick way to kind of tell them the price, ask for the order in a nice way, and move them down the series of questions. So this one takes a little bit of a fun investment. So they like make metal business cards now. If you've heard about this before. You can go on tops.com and make your own little baseball card. And I use this as a close because you can only order like 100 at a time. So I, I love sports growing up. And I go, hey, Mrs. Jones, like in Cutco, in my area, I'm kind of like a big deal. Like people know me and like they come by the booth. Hey, that's my Cutco guy. That's my Cutco concierge. That's Cutco Mike. Here's the cool thing. If you actually get my baseball card, I'm going to autograph it, date it, and in 10 years, it'll actually mature, kind of like Babe Ruth's rookie card. You can't bend the corners, but it'll actually be worth a free knife. And I'll even write on there a free knife. And I have people from my first generation, they're about six years in, so these are going to mature. And uh, they laugh and they love it. And they, it's just a fun, like, little closing thing. So I also use the metal business card sometime. And I'll go, I tell you what, you ever go to Starbucks? They make these gold memberships and VIP clubs. When you actually get this is when you drop 1000 bucks on knives today. You get unlimited discounts, special offers. You get invited to my uh, barbecue party. And it's just a fun way to make, it, make them feel special. So not everybody's going to do that. But think of, hey, maybe you're at that level where you want to do something fun. All right, so this is the Costco Nordstrom's clothes. Uh, I do have to make a disclaimer. This is not Cutco's warranty. So Cutco's warranty is, you know, hasn't changed for years. But I know my career and my business, so I'm confident. And I'll say, hey, Ms. Jones, here's the deal. If you're willing to try it out and go with it today, I, you know, the way I run my business is I have my phone on me at all times. I respond to emails and texts you know, within a day. If there's anything you don't love a 1,000%, it's not the right color, not the right size, it doesn't work out for you, I will personally buy it back from you and use it for my home collection, or if it's still brand new, we can always get you a credit through Cutco. And maybe I get one or two returns. Um, but you know what? Those are the people that become even more loyal because then like, you honor the guarantee, you exchange it for a different color, and there's a few times where I gotta cut a check back, and um, you know what? I'm willing to do that because I promise that. So, like I said, that's not a Cutco guarantee, but if you feel that you want to live up to that and honor that. And you can even say, it's, hey, it's a one-month guarantee, a six-month guarantee. Um, and I do that a lot on hunting knives, too. I go, hey, I know it's not hunting season right now, but if you're willing to try out this hunting kit and you use it, you know, come fall and you don't love it, I'll buy it back from you or exchange it for the different edge. Um, so this is the Tom's clothes. You guys know what Tom's shoes kind of represent? Like buy one, get one, or buy one, give one? So I do this a lot when I'm selling like K-bars and they're like not gonna go for it. I go, hey, I tell you what, I'm not supposed to do this because Cutco never offers a buy one, get one. But I tell you what, you buy that K-bar, I'll throw in a, a knife for your wife or a pocket knife. Or if they buy a chopper, I say I'll throw in a free gadget or a free board or a free sharpener. So hey, it's not a way to like, it's not an average order sale talk, right? But you get customers. Um, and then I also do that if they're with a friend. So I get their friend involved, whether they're a referral or just someone like a bystander, I go, hey, I tell you what, I want them to have the Cutco experience, so if you buy, they're getting a free item too. And they love it, because now they're both involved, they're both a part of it. All right, so this is the knife expert close. So this is when the guy comes up and goes, uh, so how sharp are these? What makes these the world's sharpest? Yeah, I'm sorry, we just closed, sir, I'm ready to go. No, don't do that. But you guys know what I'm talking about, the knife experts out there? 
So those are the people who are the chefs, not the cooks. And they just kind of want to like see and drill you. So just kind of give it back to them. Go, hey, we're the world's sharpest, you know, 20 million customers, the oldest, longest standing American-made knife company. I always ask this question, are you a knife guru or expert that you're just kind of trying to call me out? Or are you willing to learn about something new? Because I'm not going down that rabbit hole, you know, just trying to sit there and convince this guy who's never going to buy. That's why I made the joke, because most of the time they're never, are oh, we got to go? Okay. Uh, uh, so most of the time, would you guys agree those people are probably higher percentage of not buyers? So hey, I'm just going to be right up front and go, hey, if I showed you some cool stuff that would complement your set, that's another thing. Don't try to convince them for a whole new set at first. Hey, if I showed you a few tools that you probably don't have that would complement your collection, um, would, you, would you be open-minded to get something today? So this is the um, might get fired clothes. This is where, I mean, a lot of these are similar to just phrased differently for this talk, but this is where you give them everything and you drop down, you show them the deals, and you're at that point where it's like, how am I going to roll this thing? So I'm like, hey, Miss Jones, I might get fired. Like, this is too good of a deal. Like, Cutco might call me and go, how did you do and write up this deal? So here's the deal. If Cutco does call you, you better vouch that I honored all this and not get me in trouble because I'm going the extra mile for you and then some. So then I'll go, I'm not going to get fired. I wouldn't do it if I couldn't. And I just want you to know this is a special treat for you. And then uh, we got the zero commission close. This is, I mean, once again, a lot of these are like, you know, you're doing all these things to make the deal. And I go, hey, Mrs. Jones, I mean, I probably won't make a whole lot of money on this deal, but I'll have you as a customer. So the only thing you need to promise me is when you want, need, or think of Cutco, you come back to me or send them to me. So this is kind of like that grocery store loss leader where you're willing to lose a little bit or make way less on the first deal in hopes for them to come back to your store, right? And then I'll joke, I go, hey, if I need some bills paid, do you mind if I call you? Because that deal is so good, I don't know how I'm gonna make any money on that one. <laughs> All right, so this is, you guys always joke with me, but hey, those individuals with kids, hey, use them to your advantage. You know, the diaper college fund. Uh, I love showing pictures off of Lincoln and my family, and. People, I mean, our target customers are families, right, with kids and grandkids, and they love it. I can't, can't tell you in the last three years how much more loyalty and fun has come from just showing more family stuff and pictures and just being quirky about it. I go, hey, I tell you what, you go and get that flatware, I'm going to be able to put some more money in my son's college fund, and he'll be thinking of you every time you use those forks and spoons. And, I mean, just... Tie them into something, a trip, a contest, family, fun, a goal, and then give them a reason. Hey, the reason I'm doing this is because of that. The reason I'm giving you this extra deal is because of that. So this is the customer, the wellness mat clothes. They come up and go, how much is that knife set? Right? They just want to know the price. They'll go, hey, see that mat out there? When you hear the price, just make sure you fall over that way, okay? <laughs> 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 right? So you have fun. And I go, do you just, do you just want to know the price or do you actually want to learn about it? Right? You get them to laugh, then you can lead them down a series of questions. Um, and then you know what's cool is you can then lead them into a mat sale. And then uh, this is the Fonz Jenkins clothes here. Do we still have a few minutes here? All right. So... Do we, we even have, stand up, we even have them in the room today. I mean, this is, this is. All right, so by the way, I mean, there's some heavy hitters in this room, but watch out for this guy. He's, I mean, he's a craftsman when it comes to closing and making his customers laugh. A lot of these things are just working together with you, bud. But, so this is something he started using at the fair, and I'm like, mind blown. This is genius. Some of you heard about some of this from Josh's talk. But it's basically like where you, you go through the, all the drop downs and they're ready to walk and it's that last deal. So you go, Mrs. Jones, if I was able to offer you like an extra deal, by the way, I mean, we could bring him up here, here too, but I, I hope I don't botch it, bud. But 
you know, we can bring you up, you know, uh, we can offer you a deal, like a um, little, little smaller discount, or throw in some bells and whistles. And bells and whistles is just a nice way to say extra goodies, right? Gadgets. And then nine out of 10 times, what do most people say? Yeah, price, right? They want the lower price. So this is what this clothes is designed for. If they say throw in something extra, then usually you got them, just you know, find what's best for them. But be, here's another tip, it's not here, but it, if they say throw in something extra, don't just go, well I tell you what, I'll throw that in, because then guess what are they gonna ask for again? Well, what else could I get? So ask them, if I was willing to do something special for you, could you say yes or no right now, before you offer the free gift? Because then you have them being willing to say yes or no. Hey, if I drop that hunting knife in that kit, could you say yes or no? All right, here's the deal. So what Fonz does is when people say price, he goes, all right, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to teach you something. And he leans in, and it's all fun. He's like, I don't care what you're buying, whether you're buying hot tubs, mattresses, you're buying a car. If a salesman ever asks you, would you rather have a lower price or free stuff, you always say both. And their eyes light up, right? And then you go, all right, we're going to rewind the tapes here. And we're going to do this all over again, OK? And the customer, I mean, they're like, they're on your side. They're lit up. And then you go, all right, Mrs. Jones, and you're smiling. If I can offer you a lower price or some extra bells and whistles, what would you go for? And they go, both. There you go. We got a real fast learner here. Good job. <laughs> So, by the way, don't miss out, if you're not a coordinator, his talk on gadgets is going to tie into this a lot. So then, then it's like, all right, here's the deal. Go back to showing them the retail, the normal sale price, and then here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you this with all the throw-ins, and I'm going to, so, I mean, how can you say no to that? And by the way, guess what? If they end up saying no to that, were they ever going to buy? No. So you move on. So we are wrapping up here, the last few. Um, did I do a good job of that one, Fonz, or did I mess that one up? All right, yeah, Fonzy. So this is the record. Um, so this kind of just ties back into that team spirit one. So it's like if you're close for a daily record, a sales record, team record, it's just time into it. Hey, Mrs. Jones, if you go for this, you'll be my record-breaking customer. So pretty simple. This is the treat yourself close. So I always ask them, hey, have you purchased anything big recently? So you get some information, right? Oh, yeah, we just bought a house. We're going on a cruise. I love that. Hey, we're going on an Alaskan cruise. We can't buy these knives today. It's information, right, to close. So this is where you go back and remind them, hey, I tell you what, well, you're already spending money. What's a little extra money, right? Might as well just treat yourself. I mean... You already got that credit lemon jacked up. I mean, let, what's an extra 300 bucks a month, right? So you just got to have fun with it and make some logic, right? And then if they haven't, like, wow, well, we haven't done anything for years, then you hit them on the other side. Hey, this is, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity to treat yourself. You're in the kitchen. You've been married for 30 years. You deserve it. Just go ahead and treat yourself, Mrs. Jones. All right, so this is the Brinks truck close. So I work uh, funeral shows. I encourage you to find your local state funeral shows. They're pretty fun. You're next to urns and hearst and creepy people that make a lot of money because it's a dying industry, so they have money. <laughs> and uh, so about 6K in four hours, so nothing crazy, but they buy knives. So the cool thing is I kind of learned a fun close out of it because I, I made that joke. I was like, so is this kind of like a dying industry when I was working? So they kind of laugh. You get it? Funeral, right? The way into those shows, by the way, is the mats. They're embalming mats, so they stand and prep the bodies. So feel free to reach out if you want to try some funeral shows. So I was joking with people this whole week, or the, that whole show. I was like, have you guys seen that Brinks truck booth here? And they're like, no. I was like, yeah, because when someone passes, you ever see that following the hearse? Well, hey, it's only money, so might as well get the flatware, right? <laughs> hey, like I warned you, you got to be willing to take whisk, right? Um, so at the booth, I go, hey, can't take it with you, right? Might as well 
to have some great knives and be able to cook with that you can pass down the legacy. Uh, the tax write-off close. So anytime you meet somebody who's a business owner or a farmer or rancher, you go, hey, can I show you a way to kind of like get this and be willing to kind of like be a little bit aggressive on writing off stuff for taxes? Go, hey, one of the things I could do is I can throw in a complimentary plate that says for farm use or for ranch use, or we could put the name of your business for kitchen use at the name of the business. And, you know, we could write that in the order form and special instructions. Obviously, you have to be willing to write that off, but hey, because of what you're already doing here, because of you owning a business, uh, might as well, I mean, just might as well go for the big set. I mean, you use a couple of those knives to entertain a couple customers. I mean, your wife's the accountant. I mean, she works for you. She's cooking with them. So that's um, something, you know, we could talk a little bit more about my business gift breakout. <clears throat> but I do that a lot with a couple engraved knives, and then you kind of bundle them and go, hey, might as well just write it all off, because if you're going to be using it for gifts or the home and social and give a couple customer gifts, or if you have to, say, hey, if I threw in a couple gifts for your customers, will that get you to go for the big set? And then uh, the $20 cookie corn dog clothes. I love this. So for my big home shows and fairs, I like to bring a wad of 20s, because at, at the end of the clothes, I like to have fun. So I want them to remember me as a guy who like, made them have a little extra fun, not ask for a lot of money. So I, hey, I tell you what, I know you're on the fence, and you get the customers that come up and go, well, we, we got to eat, right? Or we, we're get, we, we'll come back. We got to eat. We got to grab something to drink. I tell you what, here's the deal. You go for this flatware package, this ultimate package. I'm going to buy you your next round of drinks. Or I'm going to buy you, buy you a round of corn dogs. You just got to take a selfie and, and shoot it to me. And it's so crazy. It's so, and people just go, oh, you don't have to do that. And I go, you know what? That 20 bucks is worth it. And I want you to remember me as a guy where you had some fun at the fair and you could sit down and have lunch and talk about, how much money you just spend on knives while you have a food coma. Sound good? And I'll pull out 20s, and people love it. So um, there's a few other closes, but just to be fair and respectful for time, um, I'm going to end there. Guys, just to kind of remember this, have fun, be yourself, and uh, don't be afraid to take whisk, okay?